This video is sponsored by Fotros. Fotros, because weather planning was yesterday. Yeah, it seems that most people would think they would never be able to take stunning photos. Just world-class photographers would be able to, right? But that's wrong. Everyone can take epic photographs. And that's even easier than you might think. Hi, my friends. Very nice to see you. It's quite interesting. When I show my prints to people, I get often asked, Christian, what does it need to take a photograph like that? How could I learn also to take photos like that? Now, first of all, everyone can take photos like that. There are even no secrets or so. You just have to consider a couple of things. Well, one mistake I see again and again and again is people see a nice mountain, for instance, and they think, oh, a nice mountain, I will take a photo. No, that's not good. <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, I'm pretty sure you will get a nice capture of a mountain. But that's not what we want, right? We want to get an epic photograph, something that is touching. We want to get a fine art photograph and therefore it's not a good idea just to take a capture. And if you should think now, come on Christian, everyone is doing it like that. Yes, you're right. But that's also the reason why not everyone gets fine art photographs in the end. So let's say goodbye to capturing and let's say hello to fine art photography. And the first tip I want to give to you is don't think about your subject as, yeah, as just an element or so you want to photograph. That just works if you want to take a documentary photo of an element. It doesn't work with fine art photography. The much better way instead is to think about the topic you want to photograph. In fine art photography, usually the topic is the subject. And this mindset changes everything actually. I simply don't only photograph a tree anymore, no, I photograph tentacles, for instance. I also don't only photograph a mountain scene. No, I photograph more and there was light. And I don't only photograph a stick in, in a foggy lake or so. No, I photograph a sea monster or so. Can you see the difference when you use a topic instead of a subject, instead of a, an element? It changes everything. It changes also the way how we find compositions. It even changes the way how we see the world. And it also helps you to achieve all the other requirements to get a final photograph. Okay, so as soon as you know the topic of your photo, it gets even quite easy to frame up a composition, a compelling composition. Even. By the way, in my personal opinion, composition gets quite often misunderstood, I have to say. There exists something like a beginner's version with a lot of graining wheels. Yeah, you know, like the rule of thirds, the rule of space, keeping the horizon straight and things like that. I mean, it's good to use rules like that as a very beginner, but in my experience, it is too restrictive for getting the really powerful image. So for advanced and even for intermediate, I would say, it is better to engage more with the artist to architecture of, the, of an image. I will not go in detail here as I made already a comprehensive ebook about this topic. And yeah, for my subscribers, it is still available for free. I will put you a link down in the description. Now, on the one hand, composition is the artist to architecture of an image. But it is even more than that. Yeah, I would say it is the technique of supporting your topic. You know, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. And that's uh, the concept of figure ground. It simply means that we should not look isolated on elements in a composition. We should, uh, should see the interactions between them all and the context. And when we boil it down, that's all done by the camera position. The concept of synapses would not work if I would have photographed it more from the right or from the left. I needed this high contrast of that illuminated branches and that dark backdrop to get this illusion of synapses. Golden Nuggets River would not have worked if I had put my camera more back there, for instance. I needed the angle to the golden light and I needed the angle to the boulders to turn them, yeah, to golden nuggets, obviously, in the end. And the composition is just defined by the camera position and by the focal length. 
So it's definitely a good idea to engage with artists to architecture, but even more important is trying to support your topic with your composition. One thing that gets quite often overlooked, I have to say, is something that I call macro timing. And that has nothing to do with macro photography or something like that. The question is more, in which environment or in which circumstances do we want to photograph our scene? I mean, some situations might be obvious. Shades of winter, for instance, is not possible to photograph in summer, obviously. Crystal ballast instead would not work in winter as the setting sun yeah, doesn't lead to this nice angle I got in this image here. I mean, you could photograph the mountain in winter, but giving this illusion of a crystal palace just works with the sun from this direction here. So the macro timing is all about the rough timing, the time of year for instance. But sometimes I even wait for several years to get the right timing. Red sky is a good example here. You know, we need a very specific angle between sun, clouds and your subject to get the red sky exactly there where you need it for your concept. For salvation, for instance, I waited even I think five or six years or something like that to get the red sky exactly here in my frame. And that brings me to the weather and there's absolutely no doubt. The weather is the thing that has the biggest impact in a final photograph. There was a time when I didn't consider the weather, but yeah, that was also the time when I was far away from getting final photographs. The weather does simply a lot of things. It defines the direction of the light, it defines the color of the light, but also the quality of light. The weather has a huge impact on the atmosphere, and it is especially the atmosphere that supports the mood in a final photograph. These two photos here show one and the same farmhouse. It is the soft atmosphere that makes this one here standing out. Well, just imagine finally light without fog and without blocking clouds so that there's no orange stripe on the horizon. I mean, it is also possible to photograph that farmhouse with different weather but that would be conveyed a completely different mood. But weather can do even much more. Just think about weather phenomena like rainbows, glow, red sky, golden clouds and things like that. So the weather can become even the topic of a photograph as it is for fire sky for instance. And the thing is, all these phenomena and even many more are completely predictable. And if you shouldn't know how, there's quite a clever tool that can do that for you. I will link your video up here. However, now we have topic, composition, macro timing and the weather. And before I will tell you about the most important things for getting epic photos, my friends, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You know, it helps me, it helps the algorithm and it also helps other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Quite interesting is people ask me so often about my camera. But the thing is, the camera is actually not as important as most would think. I mean, yeah, we, we need any camera, of course, otherwise we wouldn't be able to take a shot, right? But especially when it comes down to landscape photography, the requirements are even quite low, I have to say. Even if you want to print, you don't need all the many megapixels. Also, ISO noise and dynamic range is not a limiting factor anymore. I would say for every camera that appeared after 2017 or so. What I would focus more on instead is technique. That means how can you take a photo from a technical point of view again to support the topic of the image? Do you want to show the water more silky or do you want to show texture? How can I get everything sharp in a photograph from front to back? What if the dynamic range of my camera is not high enough? Is it okay to lose details in the shadows again? There is no right or wrong or so. That also just depend on what you want to express with your photo. It depends on the topic of your image. So instead of buying a new camera or new lenses, I would focus more on questions like that. 
because the best gear in the world gets worthless if you don't know how to use it for your purpose. For the next part, there is a big warning. <laughs> what I'm going to tell you now is something no one seems to be interested in, but it has a huge impact on a photograph. I would even say it makes or breaks a fine art photo. And the absolutely crazy thing is, it's just a tiny thing and would be so easy to be fixed, not after watching Lightroom, but out in a field. Now, let's imagine we have considered everything. We are out at a beautiful place. The weather is just perfect. And then we make a big mistake. We press this button here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should press the shutter release button in the end, of course, but we should wait that everything thing comes really together. Topic, composition, macro timing, weather. We brought our camera and set up, but now we need one more thing, and that is what I call micro timing. You know, sometimes we simply have to wait for that cloud moving exactly there where, we, where it adds to the image. Sometimes we have to wait that the mist is rolling in or yeah, that it gets pressed down so that it turns to ground fog at least for a few seconds. Or that the album glow is kicking in while the mist around the mountain is resolving. Or that the sun is shining through a tiny gap in the clouds for just a few seconds. Yeah, I, I could show you tons of examples uh, like that. In 99% of my final photographs, the micro timing was absolutely relevant. And I would say in yeah, 85% of the times, the right timing lasted just for a few seconds. By the way, the difference to macro timing is that the micro timing is the last thing you consider out in the field. The macro timing instead is already considered at home in your planning process. Both is important, but I would say the planning itself is maybe even the most important phase in taking a finite photograph. Really, I can't stress you enough to focus on planning. I will not go in detail here. I made already a comprehensive video about planning. I will link it here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video. If you have shared with your friends, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.